Today we're going to take a look at the G502 Light Speed Wireless Gaming Mouse by Logitech. Let's see how it stacks up against some of its competition. So here's the packaging that it comes in. Pretty straightforward, simple, I like it, it's clean. Move the top and the, this is your simple presentation. Just the mouse by itself. And my first impressions are, it's a little narrow. It's something that I personally prefer a wider mouse. As you can see, my hands are not, I guess the smallest there. I don't have the largest hands in the world, but I do prefer a slightly wider mouse, but that's just a personal preference. Regardless, pick it up, it's really light. That's the first thing I notice. Um, get inside here. You have this little box right here. This is going to have a couple things in it that's kind of interesting. Weights. So you can change the weight of this mouse by these little two and four gram inserts. Uh, as you can see, you can really add some weight anywhere from, well, two grams up to what would that be? Four, eight, 16 total grams you can add to the weight of this mouse, which again is already quite light. We can cover the, cover the, uh, the specifications here in a little bit. And then you get under here, you're gonna have a quick start, gar quick start guide, um, sticker, which, you know, whatever. And then your all important USB cable, which we're gonna move that off to the side. Actually, first thing I'm gonna show is it's not a USB-C. I wish it were a little bit uh, cleaner, nicer. I, I wish it, if it were, like I said, but, um, but you know, still, it'll work what they provide so you don't really have any other choice so first things first I'm just gonna kind of set this back together and we're gonna show you how to change the weights so there's a couple things you can do first off you have this if you just kind of pull off on the side here you see this little plastic ridge here pull off on the side and you can insert your two gram weights right in there and I'm just gonna go for the extreme and do so And they have little picture grams in, or yeah, picture grams in here that you can follow. In case, so you know the idea of shape is tough, which it might be for me. And then you simply put the cover back on. Got little two little notches right here. They're gonna write into these magnetized put it down and set to go the other spot you have that you can add additional weight is a little store uh, storage compartment right here push down at the bottom lift that up and inside of here is your wireless transmitter it's an interesting way to pack it right off the bat but you know that's what they do and then here's where you can put your four gram weights again pretty straightforward Fit in there quite nicely. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put it just like that. So it snaps right back in place magnetically, which is again, real simple, smooth. And it really does add some weight. It's, it's crazy what 16 grams extra weight does. Again, I prefer a heavier mouse. I heard, prefer a larger mouse, personal preference, uh, but that's just me. And then the other thing inside this case I didn't mention is how you start to, uh, you, uh, start the hookup of everything, make sure that your wireless transmitter works correctly because they want you to hook it up via USB. We'll do that here in just a second. So before we get into um, the setup of the mouse and what you can do with it, I just want to glance through some of the specifications that Logitech does list on their website and on the packaging. Um, this is a, a nice little mouse. I'm going to start off by saying that uh, it is not cheap. Uh, as you can see, they list it as a retail price of $149.99 uh, in U.S. dollars. Uh, do some shopping on Amazon or on Newegg. Uh, we can find it for a little bit less. Um, I am going to tell that anybody that wants to buy any products for electronics coming up here in the near future, wait until uh, July 15th. That's when Newegg's got their uh, fantastic sales coming on and I, I believe they're doing that 
uh, in response to Amazon Prime Days. And that's the other portion is the Amazon Prime Days are gonna be July 15th and 16th. So I think I think that a person should wait until those sales are available to see what pricing on these items are going to be. Uh, right now, Am uh, New Egg shows us at $149.99 US, just like uh, what Logitech is listing. And then also on uh, New Egg, looks like the Prime has got it at $149.99 uh, as well. So right now, it looks like it's pretty consistently priced. Again, I would uh, suggest to wait until you have um, July 15th, July 16th coming up for uh, Prime, days, Prime Days as well as Logitech's, uh, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> Newegg's fantastic sale. Anyway, diving into this, this mouse is uh, pretty straightforward. First, let's just cover a couple things that they're going to show on their website. They're going to say that, the, hey, this light speed wireless is so fast that you won't be able to tell any difference between wired or wireless and after using this after using uh, my rocket leader and the corsair what's it called the corsair iron claw i would agree with those statements uh their website's got some fancy slideshows on here that you know frankly don't mean a lot to me uh one thing that is nice is it does talk about the fact that they use their uh what they call their next generation uh hero 16k sensor um it is a very fast sensor. Again, personally, I don't, I mentioned this in my last uh, mouse video, is that I don't use the 16,000 DPI. I think that's just crazy. I, I, I mean, you tap it, and unless you've got like, I don't know, five monitors and you need to get from one to the last in, in a moment, uh, it's just as crazy to me. But um, it is very responsive. Uh, I cannot tell any difference between the uh, wired and the wireless version of this. Obviously you can use this as a wired, you just plug in the USB and go, and that's also how it charges. And we'll come to the, that here in a second as well. Uh, the, the power efficiency in this Hero sensor is insane. And I, they, they chat about this uh, for just a little bit here. One, down in the specifications, I'm gonna scroll down here. It says for continuous use, meaning you just use constantly, non-stop. If you're able to stay awake for 48 straight hours doing nothing but gaming, this will work with the, light, uh, the lighting on, default lighting. If you turn off the lights, uh, which would make sense that the LED lighting is gonna use some power, you can use up to 60 hours. So if you think you can stay awake for 60 straight hours, God bless you. Uh, I don't know how that's really possible, but still. And I will tell you out of personal experience that I charge this thing and three weeks later of use at work, so I use it five days a week, all day. Now, and I'm not constantly just doing nothing but on my computer, but physically working all day, not shutting it off at night. This thing, was, after three weeks, was still at 25% charge. I thought that was incredible. Um, the Corsair Iron Claw, not, not a chance. I mean, that thing was dead within a couple of days. Uh, if in continuous use, you might get eight hours out of it, maybe a little longer. Same thing with my rocket leader. I could use, uh, leave my rocket on and that will work continuously for approximately a couple of days uh, by being left on, just period on and using, uh, you know, four to six hours a day in there. And it will need to be charged 100%. It just is what it is. This thing does not need to be charged uh, nearly as frequently. And it's amazing how as the battery's dying, you don't really seem to be losing any responsiveness either. Uh, when it says here, zero smoothing acceleration filter, filtering, I would agree with that. This thing is just absolutely smooth. You can use it with Windows 7 or later, uh, Mac OS uh, 10.11 or later, Chrome OS, you do have to have a USB port, which obviously that makes sense. And you do need to download the Logitech G Hub software, which we'll go over that in just a second as well. Um, I covered this in the box it comes with these weights again i prefer a heavier weighted mouse it feels nice to me I, I just i think my larger hands kind of play into that a little bit i prefer having uh the more of the feel and the weight of the mouse itself uh against my hands and it, it is very natural the rgb lighting is very simple you just have a couple places where it really illuminates it's going to illuminate here and it's going to illuminate on the uh the logo uh, really don't need much more than that in my personal opinion. Uh, it 
looks clean. One thing that is nice is it does support their uh, power play wireless charging. I didn't buy that. Um, I personally don't, because of how I have my setup used, I don't really need it. But uh, some people might really be into that. And, and that would be, you know, one way of keeping it always charged. You just place it in this charging spot and it, you never have to worry about uh, uh, plugging it in. Uh, not that you really have to worry about plugging it in as it is. This thing just seems to last forever. So uh, we're going to dive into the uh, the Logitech G Hub here. Now I do have a Brio hooked up, and you can see that up here. Uh, it might be blocked by my uh, mic. I'll move that out of the way for a moment here, but um, that shows up in here as well. Which is, uh, you know, the G Hub is a nice little situation or a nice little uh, set of software. Not the best, but not the worst. It's, it's I would say for software for mouse, it's not quite as nice as Rocket's Swarm software, but it's not as bad as uh, Corsair's IQ software either. Um, it's really simple. You go in here and you've got a couple options. One, you play around with your light sync. You know, how do you want your lighting to be? Do you want to have a, you know, just a cycle of colors? Do you want to do something that's a little more fixed? Do you want to do a breathing? You know, I go ahead and I'm going to do this. I'm going to sync my light lighting zones based upon whatever this is here, some sort of a cyan. Um, you know, I don't know. It looks fine to me. Um, you can get in here and play around with the rest of stuff if you want to just do the uh, logo only. And what they call primary is syncing these zones here. So that'd be your profile switches as well as your um, your logo itself. You can assign your buttons. Now, I do like this because of the fact that you can uh, assign these fairly simply. You just literally pick the button that you want to assign. And in this situation, let's say I want to assign the, the middle mouse clip to be something. I can disable it. I can use the default. If I want to program it for something else, you just kind of scroll to where the um, what you want it to do. Do I want it to be a, a key mode? So let's say I want this to be the letter A. I can literally just click that. It's going to be the letter A, pretty straightforward. Um, I'm just going to leave it at default. So, And then you've got your sensitivity and your DPI. Right out of the box, it is set up with your 400 DPI. Uh, is the setting for the uh, trigger lock, as they call it. So you just press this, and it's going to lock your, your targeting mode or whatever to that. So if you really want to cycle on someone, you're playing... Um, you know, PUBG or something like that. You've got that for aiming, right? Uh, this is annoying. Uh, the pop-up where it says every single time I press the button, it's changing my my DPI. I gotta figure out how to disable that. I can't stand it. You can cycle between your DPI speeds uh, using your G7 and G8. So the top keys on the left. Uh, top one will take it up to the 3200. Uh, you know, again, you can set these to whatever you want them to be. 6400, a very responsive. I typically leave mine around that 1600 to 2000 DPI range. That's just, again, personal um, preference. Uh, real straightforward. So anyway, so that's what we got for this. And I'm going to show you how uh, responsive it is in a game. So let's launch up uh, Overwatch, I guess. Uh, play around and... Uh, See how it turns out. Okay, before we jump into Overwatch, we're just gonna create a quick profile. I know that there's saved profiles in here. I haven't played around with them yet, but I wanna show you how easy it is to program this and set up a very simple profile um, for your mouse to use however you would like to use it. So first things first, obviously this is set up and it shows you your, your, key, fault, your key assignments and whatnot, but I'm gonna go back here and you have this piece here where it says active profile, desktop, uh, default. I'm going to click on this and down here it gives you options for your your profiles. Now what's cool is it does show you you have different games here and I'm just gonna go ahead and select Overwatch and I'm gonna select actually no check that I'm going to change that back to desktop. We're gonna just create a simple one so we're gonna name this profile I'm gonna call it uh, Overwatch 1 Okay, um, because I just want to show you how to do this. It's pretty simple. Okay, so we're in Overwatch 1 desktop. And to know that you selected it is, again, you've got your desktop, you got default, Overwatch 1. So within here, I'm going to select this. Actually, yeah, we're going to select this. 
go into the mouse and I'm going to say, okay, how do I want this thing programmed? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and have my lighting to be something. I'm going to do a, I don't know, we'll let it cycle. I don't care. No, we're going to, we're going to change that because I don't like cycling. And we're going to change it to, let's go to, ooh, there we go. I like purple. Let's go to a nice purple. All right. And we're going to sync lighting zones to purple. So that's what I want. I wish there were more uh, effects. I will say that, but regardless, that's fine. Um, like if I could have a gradient set up where it cycles between two nice and simply, I would prefer that. And maybe there is, I just haven't figured it out. Go right in here to the keys. And like I said, we're going to set up, uh, what do we got? E and Q first. We're going to go, we're going to set up the side ones to E. And this one will be Q. And then I'm going to go back to the top. Oops, top. I'm going to set up DPI, DPI up to. Oh, this one will be V. So that's like a quick strike. And we're going to set this one up as R for reload. And then we're going to set this up as melee, which if I remember correctly is F. All right. And let's see where my sensitivity is right now. I got 800. I want to be at, let's, yeah, let's do 3,200. Let's see if I like that. All right. So, and then if you want to test this, this is what I do. So open this and there's the top one. Okay. Pretty straightforward, right? So that works. No, I don't need to save this. So now let's go ahead and load up Overwatch and see how it works in the game. Okay, so I'm not the world's greatest um, uh, Overwatch player, but we're gonna go in here and go ahead and do a quick play and see how I uh, hold up. Welcome. Yeah. I will protect the innocent. So as you can see. I've got this program to to um, reload. I've got quick melee. I interact. I got everything set up here. So, and I will say this: the mouse is very Much responsive. Better. I mean, this is insane. Very sensitive. I might have probably should have turned it down a little bit. What's nice is I'm aiming right, and I got my quick aim. Or my, my quick game, but my uh, the DPI reducer. So I think I need to turn down the sensitivity on the mouse. Oh, All right, Actually, I'm going to use my Orb Weaver. I just, I like how it feels, so. More natural to me. It's got the nice curve that my hand sits in. We'll talk about that a different day. Mm, let's go defend. I have to do with the keyboard. Thank <laughs> you. 
Raptora systems online. Can change one of the button to a shift button. That would have been useful. programmed with my back key here. So I'm going to use that here in a second. Outside of learning that I'm not the greatest Overwatch player in the world, uh, I'm not that bad, but I'm not great at it, um, we have learned that this mouse is a really nice mouse. Click, the clicks on it are distinct, uh, they are tactile, they don't feel overly spongy, they're not as crisp feeling as say the uh, Corsair Iron Claw was, but they still feel great. The programmability of the uh, mouse through the software is fantastic. Uh, if it had a few more features to it, such as uh, something that I really like, which is um, on my leader mouse, I actually have an option on the side here that I can click, and it's an option click. So when I hold this down, I can use any other key on here. It gives it duplicate um, uh, modes or availabilities. So if I need to do one thing in the middle of a PvP move, I can click it, release it, same thing. It's that fast. Now, with this, uh, their solution is what they call the G-Shift. Problem with it is it's not quick. It's not simple. You have to push it, do your action, push it to release it. I, I don't like that as much, but it does give you other options in other games that maybe don't have as many functions or features needed. Um, overall, however, it is very responsive. Uh, you cannot tell at all that this thing is a wireless mouse. The only downside outside of that for me is I do wish it was a little thicker. Compared to the uh, Iron Claw, you can see that it is not noticeably thinner, and even more so to the leader that I use, it's even thinner yet. Uh, I have larger hands. I like my the mouse to cover the whole inside of my hand. I feel like I have more control, uh, a little more usability for me. 
Uh, the one thing I do like about this that I wish the others did was the availability to customize the weight of the mouse by increasing it in two gram increments for the first four and then uh, four more grams each. So a total of 16 possible gram increments um, on this mouse. It is light in the beginning, so if you like a light mouse, that'd be perfect for you. It's probably one of the lightest out there. If you like a heavy mouse, that adds 16 grams to the already light weight. I love this mouse. I, uh, if this uh, had the programmability and the features of, say, my leader, I would switch to this in a heartbeat. Um, but with that said, I think this is a mouse you should consider as long as you don't mind the budget of $150. Uh, the Corsair is cheaper at around $79, $80 somewhere in there. Uh, I guess the same thing. Or the leader, which is around $130 approximately. If you like that video, you know what to do, hit that thumbs up. If you don't like the video, hit that thumbs down. Hopefully it's not that. Hit that subscribe button for me. Uh, share it. If you got any comments you'd like to make, please leave so in the video description below. I will respond to them. I'm looking for features and uh, ideas for the future. And if you got anything about this month that you uh, think I left off or needed adding, please do so. Otherwise, have a great day. Today we're going to take a look at the G502 Lightspeed Wireless Gaming Mouse by Logitech. Let's see how it costs...